Here we demonstrate how to apply force or torque on the actual mechanism. Also we add mass, inertia and gravity. First I will add an external force. Running this mechanism we'll see what it does. Now we'll apply a load on node 3. We choose for loads, false, and we choose the node, node 3, and we choose for the, the means as function of time. So we need a table on the time axis from 0 until 1 second. We want a force of 1 newton constantly, 1 newton constantly, and an angle of minus 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees, again, to let it point downwards. Here we see the graph, it's 1 newton at an angle of minus 90 degrees. So here we see the force as an arrow. And we can display the result of the force load on node 4. Choose the force in y direction. And we see the curve here. So it goes down as the arm becomes smaller and smaller. OK. Next I will add an external torque on a gear axis. The shown gear has a transmission ratio of 1 to 2. So we select loads, torque, and we select the axis of this gear, node 2. We will build a table with an argument as function of time. So we need two points at least from one, 0 to 1 second and we let grow the torque from 0 to 1 newton millimeter. Here it is shown. So it will grow from 0 to 1 during 1 second. So here's the symbol of the torque. And we will show what the motor has to do to bring up this external torque. We select the motor, choose for torque as a graph, and we will see it now. So here we see during one second the torque will grow to 0.5 as the transmission ratio was 1 to 2. Next I will start a new example and add a mass and show the influence of gravity. Here we see a beam with a length of 1 meter and I will add a mass. So we add a mass to this node, a mass of 1 kilogram. Still runs. So next we will add gravity. Choose for the default value. And I will show you now what's the effect on the motor. So we choose the motor and let the torque being displayed. So here we see the curve of the torque, which is a, starts at a high value, goes to zero on top, gets a negative value there, goes to zero again, and will grow to its highest value. I just added a mass to a node. Alternatively, we can add mass to a beam. So I will remove the mass we've just added. Torque becomes zero, and we will add a mass to the beam. Therefore, we go to the element properties of this beam, and here we can enter, answer, <coughs> enter the mass. And let's say we put it on a position of 0.5 of its absolute length. And here we see the mass. And we see 
another curve of the torque for the motor. When you use the mass on a beam position, you can play around with the mass value and its position by using element properties of this beam. In this way, you can use the track bar here and you put it on a nice position. And now you can change the mass value or you can change its position. And you dynamic, dynamically can see what happens with the torque. Finally, I will pick up the previous example of the gear wheel. And here we are. And we'll show how to apply inertia on a gear wheel. First, we modify the input motion, which is now a linear type. And we will change this in a polynomial. Modify it like this. And we see the acceleration of the gear wheel in this graph. So here we see acceleration of the gear wheel. Now we will apply an inertia on the second node. Inertia here. And I take some number, a reasonable big number. And now we will ask what's the torque needed for motor to choose the motor, plot the torque, and we will see a curve. So as the motor accelerates, it needs more torque due to the inertia we have applied in node 2. Okay, thank you.